Hello everyone and welcome to another tip. This time we'll be going over adding masking to a game character. So we're still staying on the subject of creating animation for games, but now we're talking about adding masking or using cutters as masks. So in Toon Boom, um, in Harmony, we have a node-based compositing system that's built directly into the software. And this is generally how we add our special effects. Um, there are some effects that can be added through the timeline and as we go through in future versions of the software we may see about adding more of the effects directly in the timeline so that you don't have to use the network. But the advantage of having the network in here, and so this is a view that we call the network view, so you can add it by clicking on the plus sign and then selecting network. So the advantage of having the network view in here is it gives you a visual representation of all of the layers and effects that make up your scene file. And so there are a few different types of layers that you can see right off the bat. Drawing layers have a TVG in the corner there. So let's zoom in on that and show you what that looks like. So drawing layers have a TVG on the, on the side, and that stands for Toon Boom Vector Graphic. So whenever you create a drawing in Toon Boom, or if you import a drawing and vectorize it in Toon Boom, then it becomes a TVG drawing layer, and we can use this to do drawings on. And by the way, if you are importing in bitmap images to use as you know images for your character rigs, um, this will work in the game export as well, as long as you import and vectorize, because it does need to be included within this TVG file in order for it to export properly for games. So when you first show up in the network, it might be totally, everything might be on top of itself like this. And that's because when you create drawing layers and peg layers and so on, they're all created at this default 0, zero position. If you right click in the top of the network and select network view, you can show the network view toolbar. And you can actually really easily order your network from here. If you select the display module, then you can click on the order network up button and then just click OK with the default settings there and poof it's just gonna order your network for you so that you can then look at what's going on in here. So if you're familiar with node-based compositing systems you may have used some softwares like Nuke or like Fusion. This is basically set up the same way that that is and we take a top-down approach so the things that are on the top, if they're connected to something, that means it's the parent. So if you look at the timeline, everything that you can see in the timeline shows up in the network as well. So you see when you select a peg, if it's a parent of other pegs, then the outport of that peg will be connected into the import of another peg. And so you can very easily see your parent-child relationships in here. Okay, so what does all this have to do with masking, right? Um, well. When we're using masking on games, we just support a very simple type of masking, and that is to connect one drawing layer to another and cut one off with the other. So for example, um, a very good reason to do this is if you have your pupil and you have the pupil and you want to cut it off inside the eye. So right now, my pupil is sort of outside the eye, and when I animate it, I can animate it all the way out, which looks a little strange. So what some people might want to do is they might want to take the eye layer and the, and the pupil layer and they want to cut one off inside the other. So to do this, we actually can do this really simply. We just go into the module library. The module library can be added anywhere in your view. I tend to like to add mine next to the timeline. If you don't already have it showing here, you can always click on the plus sign and then select module library to add your module library in. Now if we want to add an effect into our scene, all we have to do is drag and drop that effect from the module library into the network view. And when we are working with masking in Toon Boom, we actually call it, um, in Harmony, we call it a cutter. And so if I drag and drop the cutter module in, then what I can do is, in the network view, I can, I can connect this in. And I can zoom in by using the one and two shortcuts, just like I can zoom in and zoom out of the rest of the views. And holding down spacebar and clicking and dragging allows me to pan. So it's the same shortcuts as everywhere else. Now what I want to do is I want to connect the cutter into the pupil and I want to use the eye as a mask. There's a really simple way to simply slide this in. If you drag the module but you hold down Alt, then it allows you to slip that right in there. And what we always want to do is we want to connect the source drawing, the one that you want to cut, into the right port on the top of the module there. 
and then we want to connect the mask into the left hand side. Now if I were to disconnect the eye from the composite and connect it into the cutter, you see that doesn't do exactly what I want because I still want the eye going down to the main composite. The main composite shows you what's in your scene. And so I want to have the eye in the scene, but I also want to use the eye as a mask. And so I can create a copy simply by dragging from the outport and then connecting it to the left side of that cutter. And right away that's doing what I want. There's one additional step here. If you simply click on the yellow options box, you want to check inverted because when it's inverted, when I select it and move it around, it will only exist within that eye. So now that I've connected that in there, I can see that as I move it off the edge of the eye, that it's being cut off after it goes outside the eye. Keep in mind that my eye layer does contain a line as well as the white fill, and so it uses the entire drawing layer to mask. So if you only want it to mask with the white of the eye, because we only support limited effects in the gaming edition, if you want the pupil to be cut off only with the white of the eye, then you would simply have to put the white of the eye on its own drawing layer, and then you could use that now as your mask. So that's it. So let's go ahead and do it again on the other eye. Just move that back to its default position. So I can take the cutter, drag and drop it into my scene. Now I can use the Alt shortcut to slide it into the pupil, take the copy of the eye connected to the left hand side, and then invert my cutter. And now I'm ready to go. I can animate the pupil inside the eye and it disappears when it goes outside. So that's it. Now I can animate this one, and if I ever do see that the pivot points are off on those drawing layers, just remember you can always use your rotate tool on the peg layer to select where the rotation is happening from or where the movement is happening from, and drag it from the center point into the center of that eye. And now I should be ready to animate this. So just to double check to make sure that I've done this correctly, let's put some animation on this and export this to Unity. So I'll go back to my transform tool here and I've got this basic animation happening so I'll just add some extra keyframes on the end there. Let's uh, collapse everything inside here, add a keyframe here and add another keyframe at the end and then halfway in between I'll simply select those eye layers and you can select them directly in the uh, camera view now so you don't need that network view open anymore and I can just move those over off the edge and then I should see his eyes going out and coming back in again and if I want that to sort of last a couple of seconds I might just move it over copy and paste that keyframe there so now that should be going out staying out for a little bit and then coming back in again so if I double check this animation this is what I should see So now I can save my scene, I can export it back out again, and if I do choose to overwrite that file, let's export it right on top of the other file. Then what that means is I can go back into Unity and the change should be applied right away. So you may just have to click play twice to reload the animation in there. And now you see the animation happening. So it's super fast and super easy. All you have to do is add the cutter, check your animation, make sure it works. One last point to keep in consideration is that um, to keep things really light and efficient on the playback for gaming, we only allow one cutter per drawing. So in other words, I can cut the pupil with the eye, but I would not then be able to cut the eye with the face. Uh, you can't have a series of cutters that are connected one to each other. And we chose to do this deliberately because of trying to keep things really efficient uh, for the game engine. Also, when it comes to deform, you can cut something and then deform it, but you cannot deform something first and then cut it. So keep those couple of rules in mind and check out the cutter or the masking functionality in Harmony and let us know how it goes. Thanks.